people get caught up when they're like, well, the housing market returns four and a half percent per year. That's it's like, stop with the spreadsheets. Like just do what's going to work for you. I know, I know Ramit Sethi has a lot of thoughts about this on renting versus buying. And I think what, one of the, the differences between Ramit and myself is I have two young kids. And so like that, that just, if I didn't have kids, I think I would be like rent, rent forever. Really? And try, and try different cities, move all, move all around. What can be better than that? But when you have kids, what's more important to me is stability. I want my kids to go to a stable school, know their neighbors, have friends that they can be friends with for years. That's but important. If we just think about investing then in terms of is buying a house a good financial investment? My brother who works in my company, and is a, he's the one that introduced me to your book many, many years ago, said to me something along the lines of, Steve, don't buy houses to make money because you have the ability to play a different set of games that very few people can play. Yeah. And what I mean by that is he kind of explained it to me. He goes, listen, everyone can buy a house. So the returns there aren't going to be huge. Yeah. Go find a game that like only you can play. Yes. You'll get bigger returns. If you're buying a house because you think it's going to be a good financial investment, stop. Like, even if it turns out in hindsight that it was, it doesn't matter. I think these are just purely lifestyle decisions. And I think so many people get screwed up when they're in a spot in their life where they should be renting because they need to be mobile. They need to move around to a new job, new career, new school, whatever it is. But they end up buying because they think they're going to make money doing it. And that's, that's, like, that, that, that's the problem. So I own a house. And if I ended up losing money on it, I, I, I don't think I'd care. that. That's not why I'm owning it. I'm owning it just because I want the stability for my family. I've just made an offer on my first ever house. And I, cause I played, I played other money games for the last decade of my life. Um, and now I have a partner and we've been together many years and we're both like 31 years old and we're getting into that position now, you know? Yep. And my brother explained to me, he goes, listen, this is a bad financial decision, but it's a good emotional, social life decision. And you need to know how to separate the two. Don't mark this down as a way that you're trying to make money. Like you might make money in tw yeah. 20 years time. If you just like, if you're still living there, look at it as, you know, you need somewhere to live. And he must've got that from you. <laughs> when I, when I, when we bought our last house, which was after I wrote this book, so this is a different experience. Um, I thought at the time and still think today, I, I probably paid a little bit too much. I mean, I paid the market rate, but if you said like, oh, did you get a good deal? I said, no, 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 no. Didn't bother me in the slightest. That's not why I was doing it for. It would be, I mean, it would be like, if you ask like, if someone is deciding whether or not to have kids and they think about the cost of kids, like forget about, uh, of course you're going to dump hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars into your kids. And it's going to, it's like, if, if money is coming into the equation, like stop right there. This is, it should not do it. You're doing it for very different reasons. This is not an investment. People, people buy houses because they think that they're making loads of money. from. Because there have been periods of time in which people have made loads of money. Historically, like that's the anomaly. Historically in the U S and the UK, Housing prices adjusted for inflation go nowhere. It's just been the last 20 or 30 years that there's this very brief window of time that owning a house was a great investment. So, Robert Schiller won the Nobel Prize about a decade ago for his work in showing that over the last 150 years in the United States, adjusted for inflation, most home prices have been flat as a pancake. It's just the last 20 years that have inf inflated people's expectations of what a house can do. Statistically, there's going to be at least one person listening to this that has made an offer as we speak for a house under the assumption that it's going to help them stack wealth. If they were purely doing it for those reasons, what would you tell them to do instead? If that's purely the reason, run for, run for your life. <laughs> Don't do it. Particularly, I mean, it, it used to be, and maybe it still is like this in many cities in America and the UK, but it used to be that rentals were almost without exception, shitty houses. There were no good rentals. A big change, at least in America in the last 20 years, is that most big cities have tons and tons of luxury apartments to live in. And they're great places to live. And they're in the city centers and they got beautiful granite countertops and they're great places to live. Don't fall for the idea that you can't live well if you're renting. I think that's, that's, that's the problem. And realize that if you're doing it for financial reasons, you're probably about to borrow a shitload of money for an investment that historically has been a very bad investment. Like if you put it in those terms, like what are we doing here, man? You're going to borrow hundreds of thousands of dollars for an investment that historically has been a loss. That's what you're doing here. Does you feel good about that? That's what I'd say to that person. <laughs> Godspeed. I, I would love to be in the room somewhere where that person has just looked at their partner after persuading them to make that offer because it was going to make them rich. Sorry guys.